Welcome back to Red Recapped. Today I'm going to describe a drama action movie called, Outlaw King, released in 2018. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The story starts in 1304, near a besieged castle in Scotland called Stirling Castle. King Edward of England was supposed to choose the new Scottish leader after their king passed away, but instead, he took control and harshly ruled the land. The Scottish people, led by Sir William Wallace, fought back, but they lost at the Battle of Falkirk. Wallace went into hiding, giving the English the advantage in their fight against Scotland's bid for independence. Many Scottish lords felt they had no choice but to accept English rule again. This included Robert Bruce, who reluctantly pledged loyalty to King Edward of England, along with his rival John Cummin and other noble Scots. The lands that were taken from them during their rebellion were now returned. King Edward appointed someone to lead a new council for Scottish administration, and both Robert and John had to serve under this leader. As the nobles started to leave, Robert was challenged to a friendly fight by the English king's son, Edward II. They didn't fight with full determination, and the duel was stopped when the prince was called by his father to address a request. James Douglas, a Scotsman, asks King Edward I to give back his family's lands and titles. The king refuses because Douglas's father was considered a traitor. Then, everyone is gathered to witness a treaty being sealed. King Edward demonstrates it by using a special fire called Greek fire on a nearby castle, and he orders his commanders to accept the castle's surrender. Later, during a feast, the king arranges for Robert to marry Elizabeth de Burgh, an Irish noblewoman. Her father is a close friend and ally of King Edward. With encouragement from Robert's father, he agrees somewhat reluctantly. His father emphasizes how important it is to have the king's favor, believing that Robert will eventually be offered the crown as promised. Afterward, back at their home, Robert and his father come to terms with their submission. Elizabeth arrives, and she is introduced to Robert by the prince. She warmly greets Marjorie, Robert's daughter, and meets Jesse, Marjorie's dog. Shortly after, Robert and Elizabeth are officially married, but out of respect, they delay the consummation. As time passes, Elizabeth gradually grows closer to Robert and Marjorie. Meanwhile, the pressure of English rule weighs heavily on the common people, who must make up for the rebellion. The king's soldiers come looking for able-bodied men, as they are obligated by their agreement. A soldier grabs a young boy, despite his mother's protest that he's too young to fight. Elizabeth steps in, using her title to prevent them from taking the boy. One night, Robert's father shares stories from his youth when he fought alongside King Edward in the Crusades. Despite considering him a friend, he comes to regret trusting him. Soon after, Robert's father passes away, leaving Robert as the new Lord of Annandale. In 1305, Robert and his men journey to the border city of Berwick to deliver owed taxes to England. After completing their task, they find themselves caught up in a crowd gathered in the marketplace to witness the gruesome fate of William Wallace, who was finally captured, hanged, drawn, and quartered. Violence breaks out as people shout and threaten the English soldiers. Robert watches in horror as the English attack Scottish commoners who are trying to defend themselves. When he returns home, Robert informs his brothers about Wallace's execution and expresses his renewed determination to break free from English rule once again. They all agree, including Elizabeth, who had overheard their conversation. Shortly after, Robert meets Cummin in a church, hoping to gain his support. However, their exchange becomes tense. When Cummin reveals his intention to inform King Edward of Robert's plans, Robert swiftly takes Cummin's knife and fatally stabs him at the altar. Later, Robert admits to the murder before the Scottish clergy. They offer him a pardon in exchange for supporting the Catholic Church in Scotland. They promise to assist him as the King of Scotland and lead the country against the English. Robert agrees, and he will be crowned King in the village of Scone. In England, Edward I learns of Cummins' murder and Robert's coronation, which greatly angers him. Prince Edward II pleads with his father to allow him to prove himself by either killing or capturing Robert. The king reluctantly agrees. Meanwhile, Robert decides to gather the Scottish nobles and present his case for a second attempt at gaining independence. While some nobles support Robert, Cummins' backers stand firm. On their journey to Scone, Robert encounters James Douglas, who pledges his loyalty in exchange for the promise of reclaiming his family's lands and titles. Meanwhile, King Edward knights hundreds of men, directing them to ride under the dragon's banner. At the same time, Robert is being crowned as the King of Scots. Later, Robert meets de Valence, Cummins' brother-in-law, in the field. De Valence attempts to make a move against Robert before the prince arrives. 
To prevent unnecessary bloodshed, Robert challenges De Valence to a one-on-one -on -one fight. De Valence agrees but postpones the duel to the next day, as it is Sunday. That evening, the Scots celebrate and prepare for battle in a nearby forest. After Robert and Elizabeth share a private moment, they passionately consummate their marriage. They then put Marjorie to bed, and Robert asks Elizabeth to promise that no matter what happens to him, she will protect their daughter. Hearing strange noises outside their tent, Robert investigates, only to face a barrage of fire raining down on the Scottish camp. De Valence, disregarding their agreement, moves his forces into range and launches an attack under the cover of darkness. As the English persist in their attack, Robert entrusts his brother Neil with the task of escorting Elizabeth and Marjorie to Kildrummy Castle, seeking refuge with Lord Fraser, a trusted friend and ally. Despite putting up a fierce fight, Robert manages to escape the inevitable defeat, accompanied by only about 50 of his men who are still alive. They are battered, bloodied, and desperate. Aimlessly wandering the Scottish countryside, they eventually decide to head towards the home islands of one of their allies, Angus MacDonald, hoping to replenish their forces. Along their journey, they encounter John MacDougall, who harbors bitterness over the murder of his cousin Cummin. However, he allows them to pass without harm. Meanwhile, Neil successfully brings Elizabeth and Marjorie to Lord Fraser's castle, offering them some respite from the rapidly deteriorating situation caused by Robert's crowning. When Robert and his men reach a river, they attempt to cross, only to be ambushed by the MacDougals. In the ensuing skirmish, Robert's brother, Alexander, is fatally impaled by a spear, and his body is left behind as the outlaw king's forces dwindle even further. Eventually, they find their way to the islands, where the small group of soldiers rest and recover. Those who are able, pledge to join Robert's forces. Meanwhile, Prince Edward leaves a trail of violence through Scotland, ruthlessly killing Robert's supporters and looting or capturing towns and villages, including Robert's own castle. Upon reaching Perth, he harshly criticizes De Valence for allowing the outlaw to escape and for his failure in tracking him down. Shortly after, a loyal Scottish nobleman informs the English of the whereabouts of Elizabeth and Marjorie, prompting the prince to gather his men and head towards Lord Fraser's location. Upon arriving at Kildrummy, the prince demands Lord Fraser to surrender Robert's wife and daughter, threatening an attack if he refuses. While Lord Fraser attempts to stall by claiming ignorance of their whereabouts, Neil secretly guides Elizabeth and Marjorie outside the walls. He instructs them to wait and hide in the forest until he can send men to protect and escort them to safety. After showering the castle with a barrage of fire arrows, Lord Fraser offers to open the gates and allow the English entry. Both Neil and Lord Fraser persist in denying that Elizabeth and Marjorie are present, but Prince Edward signals his men to approach, demonstrating that they've already taken them into custody. Filled with anger at their resistance, the prince orders Neil to be hanged from the castle gates, and then he is brutally disemboweled in front of Elizabeth and Marjorie. He then slits Lord Fraser's throat and commands Robert's wife and daughter to be taken back to England as hostages. On the island, Robert receives the grim news of Neil's execution and his family's capture. Fueled by a burning desire for revenge, the outlaw king returns to the mainland. Recognizing that facing the English directly would lead to defeat due to their overwhelming numbers, he shifts his strategy. The Scots opt for guerrilla warfare, launching surprise attacks on English fortifications in small, covert groups. After successfully defeating the garrison at his own castle and setting it ablaze, Robert permits James Douglas to do the same with a handful of men. Soon after, Douglas infiltrates his family's castle on Palm Sunday. While most of the English garrison is inside the church, engrossed in mass, he boldly reveals himself and chants Douglas. His men ruthlessly dispatch their foes and set the castle ablaze. They then rally supporters for their cause before reuniting with Robert. Meanwhile, King Edward I grapples with the increasing awareness of his own fragility and deteriorating health. In England, Marjorie is taken away by a nun and placed in a convent, essentially serving as a high-profile hostage. Meanwhile, Elizabeth's parents are brought to her, joining her in captivity. Prince Edward II makes an attempt to persuade her to sign a document renouncing Robert, annulling their marriage, and granting her pardon for her supposed crimes against the crown. When Elizabeth defiantly refuses and even laughs at the prince for his ongoing failure to capture her husband, she is cruelly confined in a metal cage and suspended over the castle walls. Upon receiving news of another raid by Robert's forces, King Edward is further incensed. Determined to personally put an end to the rebellion, much like he did in defeating William Wallace at Falkirk nearly a decade earlier, he musters his army and leads them into Scotland. However, on the march, King Edward I collapses and, 
On his deathbed, he instructs his son to boil his body and carry his bones into every battle against the Scottish. As the king succumbs to dysentery, the prince's final words to his father reveal a lack of love, as he mocks him and asserts that his father mistreated him because he recognized that his son possessed greater strength than himself and was afraid of it. Before departing from his deceased father's tent, Edward II commands his men to bury the late king's body right there and then, disregarding his final request. With the English drawing nearer, Robert resolves to confront them in a decisive battle rather than persist in evasive maneuvers. Despite his men's reservations, they place their trust in their king and make preparations. They choose a swampy battlefield and construct large ditches filled with sharp stakes to catch the English heavy cavalry off guard. Later, James Douglas is assigned the task of intercepting the prince and proposing a battle at the designated location. The two forces clash on the field the following day, the English, numbering in the thousands, face off against Robert's army, which barely surpasses 500. Eager to prove himself and solidify his position as the new King of England, Edward II orders de Valence and a host of heavy cavalry to charge at Robert's awaiting army. Unfortunately, the English realize the traps too late, and both horses and knights fall prey to the stake-lined pits. This leads to a brutal and muddy battle. Even after Edward II himself joins the war with his remaining men, the Scots persistently cut down English soldiers, eventually causing them to flee and retreat. Once again, Robert and Edward II engage in a duel, with Robert emerging as the victor. Battered and pleading for mercy, Edward II is spared by Robert and allowed to withdraw with what remains of his army. This marks a significant triumph for the Scottish king in his struggle against the English. James Douglas would go on to earn the moniker the Black Douglas and reclaim his family's lands. Angus MacDonald would be granted the title of Lord of the Isles. Edward II would return to England, where he would be crowned king, only to meet his demise at the hands of his own nobles years later. The movie concludes with Elizabeth eventually being released in a prisoner exchange, reuniting with Robert and Marjorie. 300 years later, one of Robert's descendants, James VI, would ascend to the throne, becoming king of both Scotland and England. That's all from the video. Thanks for watching and take care.